What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. And today we have a special guest. Finally, I've been able to track him down, convince him to get on the show, I, I Mr. Tracy it. Spivey. Huh? Yeah, he's snuck, snuck in. Um, how you doing? Yeah, we all good. Happy holiday to everybody. Hope everybody's enjoying their Labor Day. We all work too hard. Let everybody know where they can find you. You can find me at Egghead News on Instagram. Or our good friends, Acad Entertainment on YouTube. Spewing and spouting. Tipping and touting. That's what we do. I've been having conversation with Brian regarding this very topic, and Brian doesn't seem to be on the team of Pedro Pascal portraying the Reed Richards that we know and love from the comics. Haven't seen some leaks, some footage, Brian. Tracy has now slowly converting over to the side that Pedro Pascal is the man and he will give us a Reed Richards that we've been waiting for because obviously we haven't gotten anything great, right? But now it seems like the possibility, those who do did not believe are believing. Brian, why do you still seem to be on the edge? Of, uh, of being convinced of this portrayal of Reed Richards. He still, to me, doesn't look or have the effect of the smartest man in the world. I don't buy it. And I think really? he's a weak link of the floor. I mean, not... And now that we're starting to get a little bit of a leak of sort of the what they're doing with the thing, which doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's early stage. We don't have a refined version. But, I mean, early signs certainly are promising. I'm all in on Vanessa Kirby. I think she's the best of the four. Joseph Quinn, I have an open mind. I think it's fine. I think it's you know probably better that it's not bigger name actor, given what else is in the cast. But to me, Pedro Pascal is the weak link. I just I don't see it. When I see the when I see the promotional art, I do not see it. When I see the leaked trailer of him kind of being the professor and being the scientist, you know he looks more like a 1960s newscaster than a genius. And I'm just not in. Until, okay. until I see otherwise. And, and I don't, I also feel like as good as individual performers as Pedro Pascal and Vanessa Kirby are in, an, in a vacuum, I'm not buying them as a couple yet. Okay. Trey, in the beginning, you were in the same boat with Brian. You didn't believe Pedro Pascal was the Reed Richards. Now you seem to have some hope that he could possibly do a good job. What has changed in your opinion? Just like Brian. Cheers, B. Just like you, I was on the why can't we just pay Adam Driver? Why can't we just get Dev Patel if we're doing DEI? Obviously, that didn't work. Obviously, we have to admit now, Kevin Feige, Kevin's on some other thing, and we I will still say he has gone Hollywood. He really has gone Hollywood. I would have never done what he did with Deadpool and Wolverine, I would have never bought back. But obviously, unfortunately, or fortunately, it worked. The big Disney meeting, everybody's head was on the table. Kathleen Kennedy's head is still on the table. Anyway, not to divert. Pete Richards, my Johnny, Ben. I, I didn't see that. I, I, I did. He, Reed is the equivalent of Steve Rogers and Tony Stark. Reed is Reed. They all, I mean, Reed is, I did, I maybe because of previous interpretations with Pedro and other roles that he's played, I have to tell you, and Pablo's, Pablo's nice enough not to throw it in my face, only because I came to him with it. Ryan, since San Diego Comic-Con, since I saw outtakes on other, other platforms with him, and Vanessa Kirby, Vanessa Kirby is basically the most easiest casting choice they've made since Chris Hemsworth played Thor. I saw John Krasinski and Emily. Home run. I don't even have to do anything. It's him and his wife. That was done. But apparently, did I really feel that they thought it was just a crowd-pleasing thing when Kevin put him in uh, Spider-Man? No, I, I, you could have, I never thought that. And it Multiverse kind of here. Face. Yeah. You interaction of Pedro and Vanessa. 
at San Diego Comic Con. She's basically falling all over this guy. He is just playing it. He is being the lead. He is just, this is my wife. This is my woman. And she's with it. Like, how do you think Pedro and Vanessa could do it? Are you kidding me? She can't take her hands off him. It's crazy. And they're, and they're legitimately having fun. I completely blocked out Wonder Woman 1984. He's not a wishing stone. He's not <laughs> Aladdin's lamp. I'm just not there. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm just not there. When I saw the footage, what I like now, that's not to say I didn't like the footage. I liked the originality or the throwback of the sort of almost Buck Rogers looking motif that's that they showed in the that's leaked trailer. I was like, if, if nothing else, go different, right? They, as bad as the other incarnations were, you do have to respect the fact that they exist. And I think we saw with like the Suicide Squad. Yeah. People often won't differentiate. Even if critics like it, they're gonna be like, I already have this, why do I need this again? And so the only way to really get people to buy into that is you have to go in very different directions. So I really like the, the, uh, what they've done aesthetically from what I've seen. If the family dynamic doesn't work, the movie doesn't work. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. what else is in the movie. Yeah. This movie yeah. cannot <laughs> succeed if the four of them on screen together can't embody love, bickering, heroism, arrogance, like all the stuff of a family problem. This will and that's, not work. And, and that is something that Ray Tracy, I think, is pointing towards in, 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 in that respect with regards to Reed Richards and Vanessa Kirby. That relationship right there, they're really, um, they're really making us believe that they are going to really, really pull this off in terms of being husband and wife and having the, having believe in the relationship and that she loves him for for his mind, for whoever, what we got to believe that she loves this dude, even though this dude is not all there in terms of, uh, he's always thinking about something beyond, right? Our comprehension. He's always having to dumb things down. So that arrogance, is it going to be portrayed? And in, 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 is he going to portray that? And, and how does she really, uh, deal with it you know and those are the, those are those little things are going to be the things that are going to make us fall in love with this family he has to it's actually the thing that i never bought about krasinski in the part i bought the blunt side of it krasinski to me was never as much of an arrogant a-hole as i think this character sometimes yes. needs to be yes and and i i think my concern has just been like how pedro pascal has typically manifested that is more the maxwell lord sort of used car salesman style of that as opposed to a truly sort of arrogant haughty scientific almost nerdy version of that where there's a reason reed is that way like he has a resume that allows him to say like yeah i should be able to tell you what to do because i demonstrably am smarter and have done more than almost anyone else and that's that's a different that's a different affect. So I'm just not I'm not sold. I'm not totally sold. But so far, things I think are looking pretty good uh, with the Fantastic Four. I like all the things so far that are coming out with regards to what we've heard so far. In that is a different world. We don't know what we're going to see, Brian. So far, we're getting these little small glimpses. I like the palette. I like the way it looks. It's so much different than what we've seen. I like all that. And they chose very, you can tell that they chose very carefully about who they wanted to choose for uh, these, these, uh, these, these characters. Well, it's funny. Like, you don't need to imagine Evan Moss Bachrock in a love-hate family dynamic because he does it every episode of The Bear. <laughs> So you can just pull up the tape and be like, just watch him going back and forth with Carmi and being like, that's it. Like right there. Um, right. Tracy, what are your thoughts on where you think the Fantastic Four box, is trending, office. Bo box office and the effect the that it will have on the Avengers film? Because that's what they'll sh that's when they'll show up next. Box office is quite easy. With the arrival and release of uh, Superman next summer, 
and by judging what happened this summer, where Inside Out is now the number one animated film of all time, people, despite the recommendations and speculations, want to go to the movies. It's obvious. Inside Out broke, Inside Out broke records. People are going to the movies. And some other films that really should not have done better, but due to the fact that there's no competition, people went out and went to the films. I'm just going, hey, I'm just going by what the, what the, what the big boys say. This one made this. This one made that. A lot of movies, a lot of movies should not have made as much money as they did. That's all I'm saying. Not to, not to stir the pot or start no trouble, but it's kind of true. If there was competition, some films this summer would not have made as much as they did, but we're coming out of the strike. This is the best year to put things out. Next year, they turn the dial up. Obviously, I think Fantastic Four is a contrast to Superman. Obviously, the Fantastic Four is leading in to Kevin's opus of Avengers Doomsday and whatever he wants to sprinkle in the middle and obviously uh, Secret Wars. To me, and Brian, maybe you agree or disagree, the movies that they put in between, those are the movies that usually don't do well. Captain Marvel, because it was in between Infinity War and Endgame, did very well. It wrote the it wrote the Kirk tale. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, but will he get that next summer? Will he get that in 2026? I don't know. There's no Blade movie. That would have that would have been automatic billion dollars. But Kevin doesn't have that now. He's putting out the Fantastic Four. Well, he's putting out Captain America, Brave New World. We don't really know. I personally, I don't know how that movie's going to do. It might be a, I'll say it over here, it might be a one-off. I saw it. I saw the Red Hulk. Was it a stunt? I don't know. Hey, do I want to go back next weekend? Got to have something in there for me, Brian, than just seeing Harrison Ford turn into the Red Hulk. And Trace, before we move on to the Black Panther discussion, me and Brian had a discussion regarding Kevin's uh, exit plan. I want to hear your thoughts on that possibility. If you saw our last show, we discussed Kevin sort of setting up uh, the stage for him wanting to go out doing something he loves with his friends because he's obviously bringing back Russo's, Robert Downey Jr., all that stuff. Do you think this his... He's going to sort of introduce X-Men and then he is moving on to bigger and better things. The way the chessboard is moving around and with the thoughts of Bob has really, Bob, Bob Iger came out of that Disney, uh, that Disney uh, meeting. Um, Kathleen Kennedy, there's some rumbling. Uh, Dave Filoni, was that Dave's project? The Alkalite? I don't know. Are people going to point fingers? I don't know. Um, the chessboard is set up, and who knows over dinner parties, Kevin would love to say, I would love to get a hold of uh I would love to get a hold of Star Wars. And then of course you have to run it by George. And and I think maybe the way it is being set up, this might be his grand opus. But I don't know how you gentlemen tell me how you feel. There's no way in the world I would not want to introduce the X-Men. To the public, I, I can't walk away from oh, he's that. He's definitely gonna do it. He's that, definitely gonna no do way. it. At, maybe after that, but I couldn't walk away from that. That's yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. crowning. I I can't walk away. Fantastic for what he's doing. It'll be out next summer. There's no way I can walk away and not introduce the X Men, the Marvel Studios version of the X Men to the world. I don't think I he'll think walk that's away. his end point. I think the first, I think the release of the first X Men movie would be his ending because that would be oh, for wow. him full. That would be full circle for him starting as the PA on. Yes. X Men yes. back in the day. So yes. Can I go back to the box office point for a second? So. Sure. Uh -huh. So just in correcting myself from earlier, I forgot. So officially, they're trying to bring this out in late July of next year. So a couple of weeks after Superman is is in the box office, mm -hmm. I feel pretty safe in saying the critical response for this will be better than the first three Fantastic Four movies, which isn't saying a lot. Yeah. So what happens if Superman is awesome and the box office for this just can't get there because everyone is still going to IMAX to see Superman. Everyone's seeing Superman for a second time and a third time. And critically, this movie is well received. 
but it kind of just does okay. Like let's say it does like 450 or 500 million worldwide. So maybe it breaks even, but it's not a mega hit because Superman is making a billion dollars or 900 million. What, what happens then? Like what, 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 where do we go from that scenario? Because that scenario is not impossible. Say this, that Fantastic Four could come out to great reviews and audience reviews and may, not make a billion. I don't think but there's I, any way it makes a billion. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's successful and it, and it does create momentum for their endgame type situation with Doomsday and finishing off with sequel. The reason I ask is because I my sense is the leash is shorter than it was. So what you're describing, I would say, would be perfectly fine in 2017, which would be it's a critically well reviewed start. You know, you sell, set the runway for the characters, and then you kind of use the other projects to really build them into stars, which is kind of what happened with Captain America one or Thor one. The box office for those is not amazing. I mean, they made money, but it's not amazing. That's true. Yes. But I'm saying now because they're so desperate for hits and they feel like they're on the defensive would this get fantastic four two and fantastic four three if it only breaks even i made this point about the accolade like i'm i'm still convinced like if this was five years ago the and disney plus was just starting out the acolyte would get a season two i don't care how yeah. bad the reaction was to yes it. now they're like yeah. what's that viewership is down people didn't like it out like done so that's my worry with this film is that like somehow it gets crowded out. And like, to be honest, it might not be Superman. It might be something else. To Tracy's point, next year, there's so many movies. Like Jurassic World Rebirth might be crowd both of them out for all we know. You don't know that. No one saw Inside Out 2 coming to that degree. Like there's always going to be a kid's movie that that happens with. So it's tough. Yeah, next year is tough. Next year is real now. No competition. 2024 competition going forward it's it's it, and the rock has a project out they want to do uh i mean you you just think about all the punches trying to grab whoa, 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 whoa. could you name me that what, what's that his red one tickets already <laughs> <laughs> which book which which movie the santa claus kidnapping movie the santa, with chris evans with chris and evans and jk simmons they're now riding off of chris evans and deadpool it's crazy it's crazy yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Fantastic Four and how it's trending and how some people who perhaps at one point didn't like Pedro pa the pick for Reed Richards and now is perhaps gaining some bit of curiosity as to uh, will it work? Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below. Um, let's now talk about this sort of trending topic of Damson Idris possibly, or not possibly, but people are sort of um, expressing themselves on Marvel choosing him to replace or to be the next Black Panther. I have my thoughts on that. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Brian, what do you think of that possibility? Because to me, he looks like a Miles Morales possibility, not no Black Panther, but Brian. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're further away from the young king becoming the main character than the fans probably would want. I mean, if I just think practically, Disney is not giving Shuri the mantle to then take it away immediately. That's not a good look. They ain't gonna do that. Sorry. Like, I mean, I, you can say that it, it should happen or you want it to happen, it's not happening. I do think Damson Idris is about to become a pretty mega star because I think that F1 movie looks incredible. And by this time, speaking of 2025, summer 2025, that's another July 2025 movie, by the way. You know, he basically is playing, I mean, as far as I can tell, he's playing Lewis Hamilton in real life. And that's basically what he's doing. But he, he looks great in the, in the movie. And I think the movie's going to look great with Joe Kosinski directing it and obviously Brad Pitt starring in it. So his star will be on the rise for sure. Um, and I, I mean, look, I mean, at some point we are going to get this character, this yes. the son in the starring role. But I mean, Greg, I mean, you guys feel free to disagree. It just, that just feels like an awfully quick 
point A to point B to point C, from Chadwick to Shuri to now this. Tracy, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts because the current Black Panther that we have isn't the current Black Panther that everybody's really talking about, right? Yeah, like, you know. So the fact that people are talking about this now very slowly, it's not something that's all gone yeah. all over the place, but little by little, it keeps popping up in different places. Both. Both. Yes. Your thoughts, uh, Tracy, on uh, that possibility. Does that work for you? Wakanda Forever, the sequel to the biggest single superhero movie of all time, did not make a billion dollars. We all know why. We don't agree with some of the things that happened or some of the direction that was made. Nate Moore made statements. This is what it was going to be. He didn't care how people felt. Okay, fast forward. We got the introduction of Nate Moore. Fast forward. Did that work? I don't mind name. I think I, hey, it didn't bother me. Now, introducing a new Black Panther, that would satisfy the people who said, you shouldn't have, you should have did it in the first place. But as, as you gentlemen have said, Disney has an agenda. They're not going to break it now because it'll, it'll look like they curved in. And like Brian said, it's just not, it's just not feasible to now do that real quick. Do that real quick. Do that real quick. They're not going to do that. And for whatever geopolitical reasons. Um, I mean, you go to Disneyland and Avengers Campus and like Shuri is a major character in some of the like little productions they do throughout the day. Like, there, they're just there, not, they're not pulling the plug on. The, the, there it is. Now, going forward, will we, when will we get the Black Panther? I think he, um, I don't know. Do you gentlemen agree we might get an alternate version in Doomsday Secret Wars or as I'll go with B, they'll use Shuri in those two films. And once we come out of it to a new universe with mutants and Storm, to have Storm eventually marry T'Challa, get, you know, get the pen and paper out, get the plot lines out, the thread line, the showrunners. Okay, but that's at the finish line. In between, I'm with Brian. They're not going to replace Shuri. They'll use Shuri. Why? Because if they don't, how many female characters that fit a certain description can they put in Doomsday and Secret Wars that it'll matter. I know it doesn't I know they're not gonna do it, but Riri Williams is up there. I'm just saying. No, go. <laughs> that that is not on the list of reasons why Wakanda Forever worked. Sorry. That's my Brian, least favorite when, part of that. We talked about our draft. We didn't mention the submariner. Does he make it yes or no? It's a good question. I didn't even think about that. I'm going to say yes yeah. for the reason that, remember that scene in that movie that was supposed to have Doom in it and then they edited it so Doom yes. wasn't? I'm going to yes. say yes for that reason. Okay. So you both agree that this is just a rumor that Marvel is not going to do I agree anything. with Tracy's timeline, by the way. It's after the universe reset. So that's yeah, like yeah, a 2029, yeah. yeah. you know, somewhere out there. I agree. But if they do decide to go with somebody. I have someone in mind that looks the part. Okay. That is, and, and, I, and I showed him to you, Tracy, Abu Bakar oh. Salim. If you've watched uh, Raised by Wolves, tell me that doesn't look like Black Panther right there. If I told you that that was a white dude playing blackface, you'd probably be like, I think so. What? That looks, you could put that in any period, yo. That is, that looks like Black Panther right there. He's, he's in Game of Thrones. Look at him. He's perfect, yo. He's perfect for Black Panther, yo. So if we use Tracy's timeline, he'd say the person you need has to fill the role by 2029, 20, 2030. 20, so even someone like Damson Idris, who has a boyish look, he's 32 now. I don't think they're hiring a new son of T'Challa who's going to be pushing 40. I don't think there's any way that that happens. I think it's going to be a 20-something when, when they do it because they want the character. They're skewing younger. Like, we can hate on the Young Avengers all we want, and we do, and I think justifiably so. But I think one of the things that Disney is looking at, because it's always about commercial, is they're looking at the fact that the generation of people who grew up on phase one, two, and three 
were in their 20s or 30s at that time and are now in their 40s and 50s. And they've been losing young audience, which is why they're trying to put young actors and actresses all over the place to try to recapture that. They are not going to yeah. miss that with a new Black Panther. That is going to be a 20 something, I think, when it happens. So we'll get a young Storm, a young Cyclops, a young. I, Wouldn't that I be beautiful to see name, yeah, Black Dean Panther Gray. and Storm getting married on, t on screen? That is a mo. That is. Everybody's going to go dressed up for that movie <laughs> if they ever did it. And Namor crashes the wedding? Is that how that works? <laughs> and Spider Man continues to be a teenager 30 years later. <laughs> this guy haven't been out of high school? Like, what? <laughs> Listen, they did that yeah. on Beverly Hills 90210. That worked, man. How old was Luke Perry? All right, rest yeah, right? in peace. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this possibility of Dams and Idris or not being chosen for Black Panther because from what the conversation I got uh, from these two gentlemen is that because of how long they perhaps will want a, a Black Panther to be on screen for... Um, they're sort of steering towards a younger person. Damson Idris could possibly, he, he will be a star after this movie. If this movie, uh, F1 is called, right? Uh, that I saw the trailer for, it looks amazing. And yeah, his, Marvel doesn't like to lose out on it. They have a, obviously a history of picking up, snatching at these guys who are on the rise. Unless James so, Gunn gets there first. Yes. James to give him one. To give him one. I floated him as like if they wanted to go with like a younger, hipper John Stewart, I floated it. Whoa. They want a young John. They want a young John Stewart. I was just saying it, that wouldn't look like the comics classic one, but they're wanting to go younger. So if they do, I floated him as a possibility for that. I don't know that he's the best candidate for it, but yeah, if I they wanted so. a certain look like it was different. I'm just saying it might be out there. I mean, that's... well, last weekend they said they have it narrowed down who Hal Jordan is, and I'm going with Pablo. You get, uh, you get, uh, what's his face? Bradley. You get Bradley yes. and go for it. <laughs> I would be shocked if he says yes to that. I'd be shocked. See what why he wouldn't do. Great. I'm not. I'm not questioning. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I just yeah, think yeah. We're, what he seems to be wanting to do with his career seems so far away from a Hal yeah. Jordan. But I mean, being a blockbuster guy and not being Avatar. Yeah, Rocket's over, baby. Rocket is over. Stop being Avatar. Let's see you, Bradley. <laughs> Come on out. Come on out. Oh man. Maybe Tom uh, Hiddleston and, and Charlie uh, Charlie Cox to talk to him. They're all buds. Man, Tom Hiddleston. They're gonna be like, hey. The money is ridiculous, yo. And the popularity. <laughs> what? You could, go, you could go be an architect living in the Lower East Side. Fly to the stars, man. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think um, in the comment section below. And uh, tell us your pick for Black Panther. Let us know in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Dirt. The show goes on! Yeah!